gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for a beautiful day. And Lord, we just ask that you will be here during the commissioner meeting, that you will touch their hearts and touch their minds, give them your wisdom, and speak your will to each and every one of the commissioners. Lord, we ask for a peaceful meeting, an orderly meeting, and that your will ultimately get done. And we just give you all the praise and the glory with thanksgiving in our heart. In Jesus' most precious and holy name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Walter. I'll do that here in a little bit. So, hour being 9 o'clock, we'll call the team to order. Mr. Todd, please, the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Everyone has an agenda. We need to. We just, Michael just sent back you a text that we need to add a short executive session right before adjournment. So that's right after the elected official department? Okay. 12, like 1230, I just follow them right as soon as they're done, then we'll do it. Do you know which subsection that's on right away? Okay. Yeah. Agenda as amended. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Motion carried.
one, 10%. Seems to be in order. The bid form. What does CMAX stand for? Dust mitigation and air quality. Dust mitigation. Get mag chloride on the road. Oh, okay. That's the stuff you can't grade afterwards, right? No, you can if it's wet. You can? If it's wet. If it's wet, okay. Yes, review that. <clears throat> That's when all complete in order. All in the checklist. Mm -hmm.
ですね This is all the um, things they have to put in the packet, right? There's a checklist. Yes, yeah, that's always going through the, a checklist right here. Everything that's required, I'll go through there and Becky was checking them off on the way down. So. Which road is this for? What's the board's pleasure on that? We want to we have to take that out of Yeah. Which are one of two accounts. If we move forward, we can accept the bid or we can reject it. If we accept it, we'll have to come up with the extra twenty thousand. What other bid opportunities do we have? Who, who's available or could do the job? Even without well, bid? It, it's got to go off the bid. We won't have it was advertised like the property like it's supposed to be. So no, we only got one bid. Yeah, I think your options are to either accept it and then pay the extra and then just dump yeah. it across oh, and have the other options. Mr. Taylor, why are we so off? I don't know, they cut back the funding, you know, I have a plan for 16 miles and we weren't even in the ballpark on that, so we tried to cut it back to 10 miles and then get it closer to keep it, you know, what they want to pay. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I'm saying it's good. Uh, if we delay it, it's probably co could cost us more. I mean, the, our options for getting people to do mag chloride is getting smaller and smaller all the time. So. What was the additional on the county side? 20% 20, 20 of 100, what was it, 179,000? Yeah. 20% of the additional 30. Well, we budgeted for the twenty thousand. We already got some of it budgeted. Yeah. So I want to get an additional fourteen or fifteen. Twenty percent of that. 
really restricting what we take it out of, so if it's eligible for that, that's the other thing. Let's make a motion for the increase in cost of that on that bid and to take the money from the county road fund. Is that, is that clear? Second. We have a motion for Crawford Seconded to accept the bid from Timberline Services for $179,014. The additional match we will take out of the county road fund. And what is that amount? Thirty. Exactly. No, because we already have some of the match coming out of there, so I'll figure out the, the difference between what we had budgeted or in the motion budget. I would like to know that amount. It should be just under nineteen thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you know, mm -hmm. of course, they have a pretty good gate contingent on white dots. Yeah. Yeah, it's all contingent on white dots approval too. So. Mm -hmm. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Motion carried. Okay. Here is. Yeah. Thank you for having us back. Now, real quick, here while we're waiting. Because we're already putting, we're already taking thirty-two thousand dollars. Okay. So the total amount we pull out of is. Total amount 
of our match is $45,676. We had already budgeted $32,099. So the additional amount we'll have to pull out of that account is $13,577. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other questions on that before we move forward? Okay. Oh, I already made the call. Oh, is that the bid? Yeah. Next up is public comment. There is public comment this morning. Hearing none, we will move on to Road Bridge. Jim, you're up. The Dewey Road uh, Bridge culvert project should be advertised starting next week. Uh, yes. I think we got the head of the second June thing. I think I can first meeting. Uh, I guess something else I wanted to present to you guys about. I know when we ordered the new leg, we discussed the possibility of maybe keeping the one we were going to trade in on it. I guess I was going to do with you guys if that was still a possibility. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it. I think you would, whatever your recommendation is, I think what the by what the board would honor, you know. I guess my thoughts on it were as much trouble as we had keeping blades going this winter. It would have been nice to have an extra one, you know, to keep it as a spare, basically. I don't, yeah, if you reached out to RDO, you know, I don't think they have a problem with us keeping it. I don't think they would, but I could probably yeah. find out. I would be comfortable making sure if we had, what was the trade in allowance? 50,000, basically, they just reimbursed us for the transmission. With yeah. the hours and condition of that blade, it's what do you think? right around 11,000 hours on it. I don't, you know, it's got some things that need fixed, like anything that's a crapshoot. You know, but we do regular samples on it. You know, we service it. We've had no bad engine oil samples on it. It needs a windshield and a muffler. You, you know, think it'd be a good backup? Hope so. You know, one of the few that didn't give us problems all winter, okay. amazingly enough. But, but I mean, who knows? Who's that? Cat or deer? It's a jump. Well, I guess if you reach out to RDO to make sure you don't have a problem with this, it's keeping it. So that's the blade we did just stick a new transmission in. So. All right. Well, and that, I've got a couple guys up on the Malwood Road repairing some fence that we damaged in the process of moving snow. We're playing the roads, obviously. We've been doing some spot traveling. That's pretty much what we've got going on there. And I did have a new employee start yesterday morning. We're back to the staff. Anything else? Pretty calm out there? So far. You have? Yeah. Anyone else have any comments or questions for Jim? Yeah. Thanks, Jim. Yeah. Thank you, Jimmy. Jim. Yeah, let me get the statute. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 405 I, I, I litigation or uh, employment. No, litigation. Possible litigation. <laughs> I, I, I is litigation. Yes, 
motion approval. Yeah, motion. Make a motion to go into the active session under 6-4-405-III. I second it. A proper second go into executive session 16 4 405.a III concerning litigation. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carried. My name is Sandy Stevens, and I know Mr. Stolkin, the county attorney. Here for it. I think we met, I was giving you the rent check. So, yep. um, with me is my board president, Bill Dinsmore, with the Crick County Family Violence. Nice to meet you all. And my advocate, Katie Gold. And some of you guys may recognize her. Her mom and dad is, is um, Deb Gold and Mm -hmm. And so she grew up here in, in Newcastle for her whole life, and she's worked for me for about eight years. So nice. uh, the reason why I'm here today, a couple different reasons, is I'm sure all of you have heard, you know, Focus is going through a transition. And with that transition, I was contacted by the um, Attorney General's Office, our funders, the Division of Victim Services, to assist Focus during their um, time of transition. Part of my job as the executive director of Crook County Family Violence and Sexual Assault Services is to help programs when they no longer have a director or they have a new director um, that is struggling. And so um, when I got the call, it made perfect sense for me to come down to assist for a couple of different reasons. Is It's in the 6th Judicial District, so a lot of the people that I deal with um, um, focus stuff with as well when it comes to our judges, our law enforcement, our probation and parole. It just it was a good fit and also a good fit because it wasn't quite that far. For last year this time I was assisting the program over in Bighorn County and making that drive over the Bighorns um, for quite a few months. Um, the other thing too is while we're here, I um, wanted to talk about our lease that we have with a few folks and to possibly renegotiate it. Um, since my time being down there um, and Kaylee as well, we've noticed some things that we would like to make some changes to that just didn't make any sense to us. Um, and such as the partitions that were up there, I call it the, the Great Berlin Wall, where these partitions were encroaching on the, the common area to where um, I know that in the past um, the former director stated it was because of confidentiality and whatnot. And we can have that confidentiality by closing the curtain curtains or the blinds that are there and, and shutting our door. The other issue that I was having was with that third room, having that door to where people would go to that door and knock on the door in order to get access and, and to focus and saw that there could be not only some safety concerns with that, but also um, confidentiality as well. Um, when clients utilize focus, um, we can guarantee you that confidentiality when they come into our office office space, but we can't offer that confidentiality when they're walking into any type of building, whether or not we're working with the victim with a protection order or a stalking order. When we walk into the courthouse here, people see us working with that victim anyways, <coughs> and they're already going to, they're going to make that connection. So the anonymity for victims utilizing focus at the uh, location right, right now, we can't offer that um, to our victims. We can just offer that confidentiality when they're within the four um, walls within, within our office. 
Some of the other changes that you guys may see is um, the Division of Victim Services is going into the, moving into the future where they're going to be regionalizing programs and they're diversifying the funds. And what I mean by that is um, our federal funds are getting less and less. And so how are we going to be able to provide um, services to victims throughout the whole state of Wyoming? We have 23 domestic violence programs and not enough money to fund all the programs. And what is that going to look like? So the position that Weston County was in with, with Focus, they thought it was a really good time to, um, to start diversifying and regionalizing programs. And so, which would mean my program is going to be um, doing the Focus program, making it in, into one um, with the transition of possibly where um, focus is dissolved. And that's gonna be up to the focus board on whether or not they, they do dissolve. But the Attorney General's office um, gave me permission to um, tell you guys that the um, Division of Victim Services will not fund focus in the upcoming fiscal year that starts July 1st. Um, those program funds will be coming to Crick County for us to be serving the victims in um, Weston County. Which comes to Kaylee, is um, she will be um, my um, advocate here in um, Weston County. She'll be down here full time, working from 8.30 to 4.30, and then I will still be working in um, Crook County and administering the grant and overseeing both programs. And I have another advocate from another county that is gonna be moving over, and that advocate is going to be um, the advocate that goes from um, Weston County to Crook County. So we're mirroring my um, entity to look, we're mirroring Focus and um, Kirk County to look like my program. So whoever is working in my program, when they go down to Weston County, it's, it's the same. Um, I've been doing this for 20 years, 18 years as a director. Um, in Kirk County, we've only ever had two directors. Um, we started in 1983 and that director worked there for 20 years in, in June, June of 1983 and then she reti she retired and the director passed away and then I stepped in in 2004. So we've only ever had two directors since we've been in existence. So we have that, that history and again the Attorney General's office utilizes my skills and my board skills um, to help um, struggling programs. Um, what else? So with the, um, the lease we would look at um, only utilizing two rooms, and the two rooms would be the two rooms without the door, and possibly reducing rent from 600 to, to 400 a, a month. Is the room you're talking about, you only, that's one that you has the outside access door to come in? Yes, yes. Okay. It just didn't make sense to where if, if the advocate is working with a victim, and someone comes knocking on the door needing services, well, when someone's knocking on the door, your, your first instinct is to what? Is to look over. And when that person looks over, well, that person that's receiving services now sees another person that's wanting to receive services. And that person that's sitting here talking to the advocate, I can't guarantee that that person's not gonna go say, well, I saw Betty Jo knocking on the door for focus. I wonder what's going on in her life. So at least if they come in through the main door, um, they're going to come around, like I said, the, the Berlin Wall has been taken down, and there's still another divider there uh, that um, County Attorney Stolkin and I talked about earlier today is, I'm okay with that coming down, he's okay with that coming down, so we have a, a clear visual. Um, we just don't know who owns that partition, and it's a pretty heavy duty partition. I don't have the capacity to take it apart. It's like you're going to need some tools to take it apart, and I'm only five foot, and it's like a six foot petition. Um, but I'd like to take that down so we have that whole common area for everybody to enjoy, to make it look more professional. Um, and so that was the reason for cleaning up that back area. While we were cleaning up that, the, that area, um, I called it phase one. And when Kaylee and I went downstairs, we saw a huge mess. And part of that huge mess was just a lot of focuses stuff that was just kind of thrown down in there. And I did not have the um, authority to start organizing it and throwing stuff away. Um, I needed to talk to the board, um, the focus board on being able to organize it and start going through it. Uh, we, we found out just a couple days ago 
that focus does have a storage unit. So what we plan on doing, and we brought in our grubbies to start working down in that basement, is taking stuff out of that basement and putting it into the storage unit and just really cleaning it up. And we want to rebrand um, focus to where it, with it being completely dissolved, um, if that's the way that the focus board wants to go. Um, we can give the victims of Weston County um, a fresh new um, approach to where it's going to get done right this time um, and so get the best services. We've also are no longer going to be doing victim witness. That's something that my program did victim witness um, 18 years ago and um, it just, I don't believe victim witness and domestic violence and sexual assault programs should be a dual program. There's just too much for a conflict of interest there. So when I came in um, to Crick County Family Violence and we had the victim witness program, I did go to um, our county attorney, Joe Barron, and say that, hey, I, there's too much of a conflict here. Would you mind taking on the grant? And Joe Barron said, no, I don't mind at all. So we have a really good working relationship with our victim witness coordinator to where we share the clients. Um, and where um, we're located at right now, it's perfect for when we have clients that can come in that we know that they're going to be utilizing the county attorney's office. Um, Kaylee did one just last week um, with a young gal that was being stalked and her father came in wanting to know the process to where we took the father right over um, to, to Miss Kim and gave that warm handoff to, to Kim because she's acting as victim witness right now to my understanding without even receiving any of that funding to where focus is receiving all that funding right now. Um, the Attorney General's Office and the Division of Victim Services want to give that grant over to the County Attorney's Office for them to start utilizing that program. So I think that we're gonna, we could work quite well together just the past month that we've been here. We've shown um, positive relationships within all the tenants within that building. Um, We've gotten compliments on just the way that we've cleaned the area up, just our professional behavior, um, just being open-minded and just setting a whole new tone. And that new tone is going to look um, different um, to where we just really want to be able to come in and provide the best services um, that we can. There's going to be um, time for this um, transition period that we are going to ask for, for some forgiveness as we're learning your guys' style and you learn our style that we may be short short staffed for a short period of time, but working with our victim witness programs, we can help help with that. Um, the victim witness program receives two different types of funding, and that's the victim witness funds and surcharge funds. And the victim witness funds are a formula funds, so I believe it's about $28,000 a year. And then surcharge are the, are the um, fees that the courts get that goes into the surcharge pot. Um, and that's roughly about $8,000. And that's going to fluctuate year to year depending on how many um, criminals are having to pay into the surcharge funds um, that goes to the state. But there's additional funds that the county attorney's office could um, could write for, and that's VALA funds, violence against women. Um, those are competitive funds, so those are just some things. And um, Kim will have to do some training and whatnot, and um, that's one of the things that our program would be able to offer is to do that. But like I said, it works great in, in our um, county, and I can't, I don't see why it wouldn't work well for Weston County, because we are all within the judicial system. So some history on that wall. It was never there to really separate vanities because of um, any, I guess, any issues between the two entities. The previous county attorney asked us to purchase that to separate the possibility of somebody that the county attorney may be representing and somebody that you may be entertaining in your offices, potentially colliding with each other okay. at the same time and, and having issue. Now, I, I don't have an issue with the wall being gone if the attorney Stolten feels like it's, that's not an issue that it, that, I mean, I don't know, that was, I don't, know how the wall helps anything <laughs> because they still have to walk all the way out and around yeah. that wall versus if a victim comes in it would be less them walking further forward they can just do this right across see I, I was under the assumption that back then they were going to come through that door that other door and that was the reason for the wall for them seeing people coming through that other door visually i can see that where they're coming through that that 
third office space where you have that entry door to where when they do come in. But technically, if they're coming in through that door, yeah, I could see where that would cut them off to where someone from the county attorney's office wouldn't necessarily see that. Um, so I think there's just, you know, we've got that pendulum, and it's like, which one's going to cause more harm for, for, for clients? Every client is different, and it's going to be unique and individual. But our office right now, we're located in between DFS and probation and parole. Um, and it, it's worked out really well for us because of most of our clients that we work with either have DFS involvement or probation and parole involvement. Um, and I just, I, I don't know. There is no perfect solution when we're working with, with victims. Um, I just wish that we could just take out that whole confidentiality because we're not able to 100% um, guarantee victim with, with confidentiality, and neither for safety. I mean, we, we're dealing with someone right now that's upset with focus and has put something on social media, threat, not so much threatening focus, but he's pretty upset that he thinks that focus um, tore apart his family. And that wasn't the case. Focus just provided a resource for this victim, and the victim took that resource and, and relocated. Um, that was that victim's choice to do that, not focuses. But um, either way, um, we do take precautions in, in what we do. Um, but we're not going to be able to always guarantee safety for ourselves and our and our victims. Kind of like with law enforcement officers, every day they take they have challenges. You're building, Michael. In my opinion, whatever you think is best. There, I. Well, one. The first point is that the wall, I don't know how much, if you guys saw that wall, but it was just like the partition, yeah, that was kind of professional, but the rest of it was like a, an accordion. It didn't look professional at all. Um, I, I guess the theory on the fir on the doing it in the first place was good. I just don't see how it, how it is any more confidential than what Sandy's proposing. Um, especially since they can just go right in, turn left, go right in. So yeah, they're actually with that partition. They're actually walk, walking further into the county attorney's area versus, and they're going to be closer to your offices versus if that partition was down, they can just come into the door and make an immediate left. So theory was good, practicality was not so much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we just don't know. So you got it's the county's partition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So. Alex Moffat. Okay. It's your partition. So where do we got to figure out where to put it then? <laughs> yeah, and then take it down. So, so that you don't want the room at all <coughs> with the door in it, and that's kind of part of your proposal to yeah. degrade the, the cost of... It used to be at 300 years before we moved it to six. The old contract? Yeah. You know, that's, I mean, you have to work with, be an office space we could rent to some other entity, but you have to be very careful who was rented to because of the situation down there with the attorney's office being there. What's the board's idea? Pleasure. Make a motion. What you said, 400? Mm -hmm. Make a motion to uh, have county attorney Stolten rewrite the contract to, I guess you don't even have to, would you? If it's, does it say per room, $200? I think it just says per. It's per 600 per month. month. So maybe we could just put in there two, 400 for two rooms and I could describe which two rooms. And That's the motion. <laughs> Just rewrite contract. Yeah. I'll second it. We have a motion for the second to authorize Attorney Stolkin to rewrite the contract to lower the rent from six hundred a month to two hundred or to four hundred a month, which equates to two hundred dollars a month. We'll be giving up one room. And we'll be um, cleaning the basement.
and what is it going to, what's name of stand? Is it going to stay under focus or is it going to be? Thank you for, for bringing that up. So starting July 1st, we will probably be doing the name change, but we have to do the, the bylaws and the articles and our DUNS and our SAMs in order to make that all official. Um, but our uh, um, target date is July 1st. We tentatively got a name. Do we want to say what we're well, thinking of? Or? Well, it, it hasn't been acted on by the board yet, so we, we can throw out options. We just don't have any official yet. I won't put a halt on this, but I would just want to clarify for the contract that he's rewriting to be worded as focus, since that's where we're under now. Until July 1st. Yes. Okay. But July 1st, it won't be okay. Is there any other discussion? So then. I can't, Becky, you have that right there. Is that month to month or yearly? Month to month. Okay, so we can do it that way. All right. Okay. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Hearing that, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. So now we've got that taken care of. Now we can move on with the name or what you want to discuss or whatever. One last thing. Um, as I was going through papers um, and trying to change passwords and whatnot, um, our phone and internet is actually through you guys. So I didn't know if you guys knew that or not. Um, in order for me to change the billing, um, I need permission from you guys to get it out of your guys' name and into our name. It is currently under Western County government. Um, so you should just cancel it. We'll have to cancel it. So what they said is it's very easy. It's called a change of responsibility to where all we have to do is have you guys put it in your minutes and then sign this form. Um, and, and that's it. And then it'll be completely out of your guys' name. And I promise to stay current on, on, on the bill so that we get behind. Your bill. I <laughs> motion to authorize the chairman's signature on the change of Responsibility change of responsibility. Second. I have a motion property second to authorize the chairman's signature on the change of responsibility for the phone system at the annex for the current focus. Yeah. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those say nay. Motion carries. We'll get that signed and we'll have to get you a copy of the minutes where we authorized it. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Thank you for allowing us to come and talk. And we look forward to talking with you guys. Yes. Okay. Yes, I do. Sorry. That was the one thing I forgot. I came all prepared and we would start walking up the stairs. I'm like, oh, I forgot my business cards. Hey, Michael, I wonder if you could send out an email to all the department heads of that partition. If somebody wants to get a call. Yeah. Well, okay. Any, anything might get a call from Alexis newsletter journal. Okay, well then maybe I'll come up and give you my card. It's right across the street. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Is it so loud Yeah, that, that, that echoes everywhere up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if just that extra with the mm -hmm. noise that might help. Might be a good use for it. And then Sandy and Kaylee can just they can, carry they can carry it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Have a good Thank rest you. of your day. Thank you, Sandy. Oh, I guess one more thing. Does Focus receive any type of um, financial mm -hmm. funding assistance? Mm -hmm. So if you could just get a letter to me, it's possible. Okay. Thank you. And then that letter, you're just wanting like the change and what we're proposing? Yeah, um, let me see. Because it's not the amount that's on here now because they upped it because they gave you guys someone else's funds last year. Um, let's see. I don't know, maybe we'll see. So, $6,725. I don't know if that's what you want to give. <coughs> I'll double check and then I'll email you. Okay. Okay. So is it kind of like an MOU? Um, no, it's just a, a request. It's, it's for the 1% sales tax. It's, we have a, we'll it's a provider of service. Um, 
So you'll you That's ask right. for the That's Washington and then um, what's the commissioner's So by system, I guess that's, that's pretty broad. Um, one thing that I know that I've looked at at this point is um, I've got some software set up on these microphones so the audience could actually hear significantly better from my understanding from the last time that we looked at it better than there had been. Um, I've done plenty of investigation on the wireless access points and the network connection here. Everything seems to be stable enough for everything that's been going on here as far as what I've been able to tell um, throughput and otherwise. Yeah, we were having, as we and I discussed, we were having complaints of connection issues, which you said the line in was fine, everything was fine within mm -hmm. here. And they've done a lot of work since we've talked last. Uh, we had five mics, now we have two mics. Um, how that's all working together mm -hmm. um, to ease the problems of constituents being able to call in and not be able to get connected. We well, had, we had teams, and then there was double meeting scheduled. There was def def definitely some things going on. Yeah. Um, it's been ways that we could, as I said to you on the phone, how could we alleviate those problems? Um, yeah, and I think some of that was kind of the ambiguity of, as far as, you know, maybe defining some of those, what was the actual connectivity issues, mm -hmm. whether, you know, you know, coming, you know, being on the same page as far as figuring out what, what's connectivity you can't hear or you can't actually connect to the meeting. And, I think that's where a lot of that ended up kind of getting lost on trying to figure out exactly what was going on because like I said as far as I could tell network wise between that unit up there and the internet everything was completely fine. Right. But we were having link issue problems and you know wrong links and different mm -hmm. things like that that were um, causing issues. Yeah and even today um, we were looking at uh, there may have been some potential issues on how those links are posted. And we actually kind of discussed maybe some different solutions on how to maybe make those a little bit easier to click on. Uh, just another example of you know continuing continuing efforts to simplify the process of getting everybody connected the way that they need to. Yeah, my point of view from it was is that we wanted to get to the point where I felt like we wanted to get to the point where every week we weren't having someone come in because we had this problem or that problem or we had to shut down or somebody couldn't get connected on. Some of that is based on their own equipment. I get that. But if there was problems, and there was problems in here that we, we weren't getting sound in some mics and not in other mics, and, and you know, those were issues that we were definitely going to have Yeah, and then, yeah, because what was that probably a month, month and a half ago now? We got the microphones and kind of understood what was going on with those and got a little bit of a software fix going for those uh, just to get these two going right now. Do you feel like our system is capable of handling? And are we putting too much load on it or I mean no, think so, we're just fine? So the way that that's going to work is when a meeting is being presented like this, this everything goes up to Microsoft and then disseminated from there. So you should be able to, in theory, handle as many uh, participants connected to it as the license allows in Microsoft without affecting anything that's coming in or out of this building. Okay. Yeah, the system in the last couple of weeks has been way better than it has been. 
advertise. Once we switch teams, there hasn't been any issues. Mm -hmm. um, is there a way to get, Gilbert is always the one that kind of ramrod in this thing. Yep. Is there a way to get it somehow that we can get it in the clerk's office so that they, I mean, is, do you want that responsibility, Governor? So how do we get it in the clerk's office so where they can be the person that sets up the meeting? Is there? So we can either, uh, right now, we're using Gilbert's Office 365 license for everything teams. What we would need to do is purchase one more of those license licenses and we can either apply it to somebody in the clerk's office or we can create an account that that license is tied to and then that way that account is the one that's responsible for all of the meeting invites that's the one that's being sent out um, you know and having the or being aware that this account isn't necessarily going to be monitored so if anybody tries to email that address or anything like that and that's, that's a determination that maybe we do want that monitored or something, but having that separate account to send out those invites that more than one person knows about and can operate would be the better way to go about it. Cost of that? It's uh, minimal, it's about 10 or 15 bucks a month. And you, you can do that annually too if you wanted to. And I think there's a little bit of a cost savings there uh, for that as well. But. Yeah, we've already got um, I think about 25 licenses in Office 365 right now. Um, and those are being used up by the Sheriff's Office at Current, but you know, it's, it's really easy to add as long as you plan on adding or keeping that license. Um, those, and usually it's better to do annually anyway because you can't actually remove licenses until they've been in effect for a year. So once a year, that the number kind of needs to get audited to make sure we don't need to subtract, but we can always add at any time. Can it change hands? Like, can you apply one license that's no longer being used? Say we take it out of the clerk's office and somebody else does it. Yes. You can switch the ownership of that. Yep. Yeah, we license. can change that at any time. Like I said, it's more difficult to remove licenses than it is to add, and then moving them between any of the accounts is not an issue. And that may be where something it might be easier to do kind of a shared account for that kind of type of stuff. And then, like I said, that's the account that sends out all the invites, but then somebody's going to have to be responsible for monitoring unless the premise is set that we don't it's want that money. account monitoring. Yeah. Um, I have a question. On the difference between Teams and Zoom, I know if you have Zoom, we could we could actually be recording our meetings ourselves. So you, you can, can record in Teams as well. You can record in Teams also. Yep. Okay. okay. Tip, typically, how many are allowed? You said the, the license is specific on how many can log in. I don't know off the top of my head how many participants can <coughs> excuse me participate in one particular meeting at a time. There's actually two different types of meetings that you can do too. Um, you can do just kind of a standard meeting like how everything is set up now, because as it sits right now. Anybody in this meeting could technically hit unmute and then just start talking over the top of everything. Um, you can actually set up kind of more of a broadcast type setup where you can only invite, it's two different invites. One is actually a participant in the meeting and then they can actually chat back and forth. You know, that's kind of the premise that everybody trusts whoever you're inviting to that particular meeting. But then a second one is sent out and that one's actually, like I said, it's kind of a broadcast there and that one will actually broadcasts everything with like a four to five second delay kind of on purpose and then you just have the viewers um, that are doing on that one and that one can't be interrupted and I can get some of those numbers to you on kind of the differences of those two but I know there's a significant amount of viewers or participants that can partake in, in a particular meeting. Like say if a hundred wanted to, to participate that's way yes. well within. Yeah okay yep exactly. You know, you're talking there. Somebody can unmute themselves and talk. Is there a way that you could actually say somebody gets doesn't even realize their mic's on and you can't get their attention? Can you re go in and unmute them? Yeah. So as well. So with what's up here right now, we I could go to any one of those participants and mute them. Okay. We had a couple. You know, some called in before, got online, and they're they don't realize their microphone's on and disrupting the meeting. Yeah, and so that's where kind of the benefit comes in with kind of doing that broadcast type of meeting too is um, you can you, you have 
the machine, this one here that's doing the video and it's pushing the audio and everything else, and then you actually use a separate computer with the Teams account um, that is kind of the controller of that meeting, and you can you could actually have multiple. Well, and so with that kind of type of setup, if you have the actual participants in that meeting, you can actually switch between the video that's being sent from here to another participant and have that video or their screen being shared, and then it's you know is all you know very similar to how a broadcast television station kind of switches between those screens. You can actually do that within Teams and a Teams meeting too. Yeah, and then with some, I'm sorry, real quick with that, you just you kind of want to make sure that you have that designated person that has that instruction, knows how to do it, and you know if that's something that they actually, that you guys actually want to do with that kind of type of team meeting. Would you be willing to make the train? Oh yeah. Yep. Yep. I've actually done a couple of those different uh, broadcast setups before. Uh, just kind of as an example, I didn't have anything to do with this one, but uh, this last Christmas we were still up virtual holiday party and that's exactly what they did is um, everybody in the company had the meeting invite just had four four or five second delay on that and then there was a couple of different controllers and it was actually kind of neat because they're actually bouncing between Rapid City and Wall as far as who was actually broadcasting uh, their, their content at that time. Are, are we utilizing all of our licenses currently? At the current purchase number of licenses are totally utilized. I got one other question. If we open this, you know, with open like this, is there any risk to our security on our servers? The meeting as it sits today, no. Because uh, kind of going back to, you know, how much bandwidth is the meeting using, it doesn't matter how many participants are actually attached, it does not affect anything here is you're transmitting all of this meeting content up and then on the Microsoft side is where it gets duplicated and sent out everywhere else. So there isn't necessarily a way for somebody to come back in and see from where is this meeting coming from. It may, if somebody logs on their computer at home and got a nasty virus, it, it'll have to go to Microsoft first before it comes back down. Right, and so, and that's kind of where, you know, even if something like that were to happen, you know, because within the, like Teams chat, in here you can actually send messages in and out of the meeting. You know, if they try to send files, well, whoever is participating in that meeting actually has to do something and click it or download it and then run it. So that would be, that would probably be the biggest concern as far as any, something like that happening. But as long as nobody's really clicking on anything within the meeting content that's coming from an unknown source, other than maybe here, where obviously we're sending out agendas and stuff like that, you know, because through this meeting, technically, the uh, previous minutes could be disseminated through the meeting itself if you wanted to. Okay. A lot of questions. Anyone else have any for Charles? I guess. Yeah. I I I'd like to get Gilbert off the hook too because I don't think it should be his responsibility. And poor Gilbert, we keep bugging all all the time. So is that a possibility to change that to where, I think one of us should have a, a password also because it's our computer and our TV screen. Um, but if, if the county clerk's office is going to set it up for us, that'd be super. But um, I'd also, I, I think we should also ask to have some training on how to to possibly record our meetings. So, so no, have them. and that would be the only thing that I would ask is maybe have one to two, maybe three people that, you know, designated for that kind of training. And then those are the ones, those would be the ones that would be responsible for right. making sure that the meeting's going and working the way that we want it to. And then if we want to, and how you want to set up the meetings in the, in the future, if you kind of want to do that kind of type of broadcast deal, or if you just want to keep it simple and keep running it the way that it is right now. We want to go with push a button and have it just go bloop. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's what we want. Yep. For us, if, if I'm saying that right now, for us to do that, to get Gilbert off the hook, we will have to buy another subscription. Another, another license would another be license. would be beneficial. And, that'd be, and, and there's a lot of stuff that actually comes along with that license too. And that's something that, um, We've been trying to push the county towards is having 
an Office 365 license for everybody, kind of getting rid of or migrating over to a, the Office 365 mail system, because the, at that point, everybody has a license anyway. It's just kind of a matter of migra making that migration process and, you know. So, I mean, we could definitely do it today, but in the future, I would hope that everybody would have uh, a, a license of some sort. Isn't that kind of what the sheriff's deputies are saying that they would like? They already have it. He's yep. the one, they've already, they're getting us a quote together because as far as the safety aspect of it, Charles has been pushing for a long time for us to do this. Is so, a major cost increase? So it's 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 it's, yeah. it's different um, because right now today because there's there's a monthly cost for just email and then and that's charged by mailbox and then separately the county traditionally would have to purchase all of the office products and then that was a charge maybe once every three to five years whereas we're kind of shifting that cost into a monthly or annual cost but then it includes all of the software updates and benefits that using uh, Exchange Online Office 365 comes with. So we're kind of shifting that cost out there. And the actual mailbox licenses are, I don't know, about 10 bucks more expensive than what's being paid today. But then, like I said, you're getting getting a lot more out of that dollar than what you were originally. It's a really paid. scary price. He's shown it to me before. Okay. Well, and so, and, and the other part of that too is, um, it's so it's not just kind of that annual cost, but there is going to be a one-time upfront cost that we would charge to make sure all of the emails in the existing system get into Office 365. And that's part of the cost. Mm -hmm. Yep. Charles, since you don't come here a lot, I'm going to switch gears on you. When you're talking about the emails, I was talking with our chairman about this morning. Why? I, I get more spam more of these I'm in wherever and I have 50 million dollars and I want to give you half of it or emails from each other that we're really not sending why are we getting so many of those and is our email really secure because I don't even get that much email personally spam through my regular email but we're getting a lot of email that just has nothing to do with county business whatsoever so to be honest with you I'm not entirely sure what job job has in front of their mail server is far as a spam filter is concerned. Um, our proposed solution does come with a spam filter in front of Office 365 on top of the Office 365 offerings. Um, and that really limits it down. But there isn't ever going to be a one thing fix all, because even within our system, you know, it, it's adaptive, it always changes to try to find out what a lot of those emails are. And there's other stuff that we can uh, uh, bolt onto that to try to continue to limit those bulk messages that come through and it, it's a double-edged sword because a lot of times the spam filtering will get significantly better but then you're still kind of checking your spam mailbox to make sure you didn't grab something you weren't expecting it to grab yeah this isn't even in my spam mail it's my my Yep. government email that's coming through to that point. Yep, and so and that's going to be where the big difference is between your commissioner email and your personal email is your commissioner email lives on, I believe it lives on the website. And there's going to be stuff out there that's scraping for email addresses, it adds them to a list and then just sends it and it's just just throwing whatever they can at the wall to see what sticks. And so depending on, like I said, I don't know currently what's in front of JoJo, but I haven't really investigated it. Um, I have very simple access into the county email system as it is, and that's essentially to set up email accounts and reset passwords as needed. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, I don't know it entirely at all what's in front of it to try to filter as much as that as it could. Do you get another proposal in front of us so we can see it? We're working, we're getting one put together. Not only that, but he's working on our cameras will be updated with what's been happening inside this room with things being taken. Our cameras have to be updated. Oh, I'll explain that later. Um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Some of the sensors on the cameras have been 
been sun faded. We're going to get cameras outside. We've already got that. It's going to work. Our servers are outdated. The Microsoft 360. Office 360. Or Office yeah. 360. What else? Um, uh, some of the switch infrastructure we were looking to get upgraded to. In fact, I brought one with me today in lieu of uh, getting some cameras set up and stuff like that. A lot of our stuff has hit. End of life. End of life. Some of it they can't fix anymore. The companies have gone out of business. Hence, you know, some of the proposals with the phone system we've been working on and stuff like that, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sheriff's Department's going to be. Thanks, Charles. Thanks, Charles. Yeah, no thank, you, Charles. thank you. Thanks for your time. Over, Charles. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, if somebody on Cambria Street and somebody in Upton and we have back to back 911 calls, we they can't take care of both at the same time. If this unless they have staff. I'm not opposed to giving them more money if they guarantee us they have staff to run both ambulances at the same time. And right now we're giving up to more money than what we are giving them. I don't, I don't, that's all your guys' deal and, and, and stuff. But we got to figure out how we can help them get more staff or, or something. And that ambulance district, I believe the city is going to try to, to work with the county. That's what they talked about last night. Um, I'm trying to work towards that ambulance district, which gives us a mill levy and goes to ballot. I don't know how all that works, but um, that could be an option. So. Well, the big concern, I was there just like you were, mm -hmm. is 12 to 4. So we, the year prior, we did four life floods. Mm -hmm. We're already at 12 this year. Mm -hmm. And if you remember, I asked them, they said their business model showed 20 employees. And they only have five. And they only have five, yet they're way over budget on their 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 payroll. And that's mostly because of payroll. But that number, 12 to 4, I mean, and we're not even halfway through the year yet. That's a scary number. And they're, they're over budget on payroll because they have to pay overtime, overtime and all this stuff because they're lacking staff. But they don't market very well for our area as well i think yeah. but it sounded to me like too on the driver's side of it the criteria that the driver needs to have for the the buses and stuff isn't near what yeah. you know you need a EMT need or whatever you need a driver need somebody to let's free up some emts absolutely and it seems like that's a pretty decent focus right there as long as they're employees of campbell county health right that was the criteria yeah. for the driver yeah and then they can insure on that it seemed yeah it seems like that would be the entrance on that mm -hmm. for for freeing up those buses. You know, in life lights, at least they have a method of getting somewhere quickly that they need to. I know it costs them more. In my, to me, there wasn't much time spent on the 911 calls because I have listened to the radio where it is taking over an hour to get that second person to the hospital, yeah. which to me is not acceptable. And then, of course, there's times where that second ambulance, okay, we're going to go drop this person off, then we'll go get the other one. Okay, you know, it's not it's not ideal, but it's not an hour. Um, and, and in the first responder world, there's something called that that golden hour. I don't know how many people have heard that before. I mean, you you want to get people taken care of within that hour time frame. Um, so it, that's that's what I got out of it, and that's how I feel about it. Um, I'm willing to put ads on my Facebook page. I would hope the county would too say, hey, we're gonna have an EMT class. Or, hey, if you're interested in becoming an EMT, if you want to become a driver, we need to help them recruit or whatever. You guys can work with them on the whole budget thing on what you guys want to do, but. Um, what do we need to do to, to help advertise for that on our website? For class? Well, if we wanted to put like, say, Gilbert, whatever ad we develop, that we can help advertise yeah. if they've got one or we can just yeah. advertise for them yeah. for like emt training right they're going to have the emt class they don't they have they don't put it in our paper they don't put it on our websites they don't they don't they, they mark it in camel and then you, you're supposed to be able to do a google and type EM, emt class you know and then it pops up and then if you're interested in western county you go to campbell county and do the classes but it's not drawing local people local mm -hmm. interest we want to draw local interest which would help fill staffing here um, <clears throat> so if we could you know help do that this this city though during the meeting said know, that they could to check into that. they couldn't put it on there because it was campbell county so we may have some statute or something that we can't do that either i don't oh, know yeah. we'd have to look into that but during the meeting stan looked it up just on his phone and yep. the last classes that actually popped up on his phone was like from 2021 so June. Yeah. they did mention yeah. that we they had sent us a letter on april 3rd they hand delivered it it's it's in for the um when we go through our budget 
doubling what they had asked for. But I, when I was listening to the meeting, they said they wanted Osage's funds. Osage hasn't received funds for quite some time because they haven't during the yeah. meeting I what I said I still believe that the original contract which isn't really a contract was so generic with us that just said they're going to give us ambulance service for services for Western County but it doesn't have any specifics on how many people what they're guaranteeing and um, when, when we get to that point we're going to have to put a lot more effort into making it way more specific one thing that did come to light was that contract encompasses newcastle and they right. didn't realize that, that meeting. how did that how did that happen i mean was there any communication with the city of newcastle when that contract was created obviously not mm -hmm. they're not very good and they the suggestion of, I, I don't know if it's even possible but Somehow, um, the hospital says they can find drivers, as you present, but maybe utilizing the Upton ambulance for transfers mm -hmm. um, because that ambulance is up there. Yeah. Um, and maybe minimize the cost of transfers instead of putting so many people on these light flight things, yeah. which I'm sure that something could be worked out there about sitting up there ready to go. Yeah. And, and I, the hospital is willing to provide. Yeah. Well, and I believe, I believe the, the mayor is going to try to get one of them old ambulances that Campbell County has turned in and trying to maybe put a new transmission in it and try to get them to donate it to the hospital to use for transfers as well, um, to cut back on that as well. So we have, but still we need, we need two staffed or even a volunteer crew or something to where they can build that second ambulance on the beam. As, as Ed knows, uh, we both have seen four ambulances out at the same time here, plenty of times. Um, so two is not out of out of the question. Um, I don't care what business model you follow. Two is a minimum. Well, you have a car accident. Yeah, and, and we've had to use more. more. Roger commented on that. I don't think so on his little on the post for that. He's like, pay the people. You need to pay them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which. Yeah. I know, sir. Just something for you to consider. One of the reasons for having problems hiring people here is because the requirement is you're not just going to work here. You got to rotate. They rotate, and that's why people have quit here since they took over. That were working here, so that's something for you to consider. They want to rotate. Yeah, yeah and, and who wants to travel the circuit? They get up early in the morning, have to drive to Campbell County or Sheridan or whatever, and they do that for a reason so they don't get stagnant. They get more experience running more calls in Gillette or Sheridan or something like that. But they don't want to, they don't want to. They want to run calls in Newcastle, then mm -hmm. let them run calls in Newcastle. And I talked to someone who used to be on the ambulance service and she quit because of the expectations they have for probably rotation and, and physical fitness and whatnot. Um, that she said it's more like firefighter training and she wasn't able to do that, although she's perfectly capable of doing And probably an been an EMT for years probably. Yes. That's uh, where we're at. So. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to give my impression of last night's meeting because that was a big discussion in the uh, city council. Um, they, I think, are just going to look at doing an ambulance district. I do not think they want to have a Campbell County ambulance here. I do know that the aggression of the city council when they had that special meeting was pretty direct towards Campbell County um, and I'm glad I wasn't a employee of Campbell County at that point because uh, I would have wanted to just walk out um, but I I'm kind of surprised nobody's here or nobody's communicated yet but you need to communicate with the city I think they really are just looking at wanting to go with the district and then that way it's controlled here locally. None of this stuff going back and forth to Campbell County and stuff like that. That might be a good way to go, but we got to be careful. That's a private company that we're talking about, and if they have the ability to just walk out the door, and then we don't have an ambulance service at all. And then I'm kind of a little surprised that didn't happen personally. 
they, they said that they're they lost money only in Newcastle, but their numbers totally didn't make sense to me. Yeah, mm -mm, mm -mm. So I don't think that that's totally. I don't mm -hmm. know. I'm not a numbers guy. So. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks Gilbert. Next up is normal business. We have scholarships to give out. Gabrielle McVeigh was number two, and Holden Conkey was number three. And our first and second alternate was Keith Colburn and Riley Davis and Maya Peterson. That amounts to is if one of the other ones don't take the scholarship, we'll no. burn the next one online. And our renewal is for Zane Osborne. I wish we had enough to fund all these kids. There was a lot. It was, it was tough. There was a lot of good applicants. Okay, so I will find out the dates for the Upton and the Newcastle um, scholarships. Can you hand them out? Who would like to hand out the scholarship this year? Because I'll have to let them know so that your names can be put on the program. Thank you. We'll have to find out what date for sure. Yeah. 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 You guys got into a of a hurry to put your vote in, and nobody made a motion and nobody made a second. So would you please make a motion and someone make a second on this? You want to raise your hand you want to make a motion? I would like to make a motion to adopt the, the SAPA bill as our resolution, okay. as we should have done at our last meeting, correctly? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No second. We have a motion properly seconded to adopt resolution 23-9 as SAP bill. That was an oversight at our last meeting. We had the discussion, we called it to the vote, and forgot to have a motion and a second made in front of us. So, is there any other discussion? Hearing no, all in favor please say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Mm -hmm. Nay. The ayes have it. Thank you. <laughs> it's a mix up, guys. Just an oversight that the discussion was too good, I think. <laughs> okay, then the next thing up is the maintenance position. Okay, let me see if Steve's here. <laughs> his position. Unfortunately, yes. Yes, I get that. Things that can be done. <coughs> you guys want? 
so we'll start on that job tomorrow. Yeah, he's going to start. He said he'd probably bring his trailer in the morning before. And I've talked to all the department heads about the parking. It's going to be open, but they're going to have the trailer parked over here so everybody knows. Okay. I guess you're walking by and the video is not behaving. Straighten them out. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on the weather, did he have an idea when they probably would be done with that? With the parking lot? Yeah. No, what they're going to do is we're going to make sure we get the parking lot problems that we got into a little wall, then this area down here taken care of. I want to make sure that gets done before anything in case the, the repair people for the parking lot call up and say, hey, you know, they told me that a while back, they told me the end of May or 1st of June that mm -hmm. if they show up or call me and say, hey, we, we can move this up, are you ready? We're going to, so it's not going to take the, that crew very long, you know, to, then they'll move to the sidewalk you know, to fix up. Yeah, I would expect maybe a couple of days of prep work and ready to pour out here. Mm -hmm. Parking lot. Yeah, instead of getting everything done, like I said, I'd, I'd like to see this finished yeah. out here. So it's going to be a little inconvenient for a few days, but it'll well, be nice yeah, that it's fixed. If the asphalt guys are ready, they can be waiting for them then. Yeah, we're going to, the, the little bit of dirt work down here, it was not included. That's up on that. I told him I can. showed up last weekend so we'll see because I, I told him that if he didn't show up last weekend that we were gonna have to get somebody else because it was getting so late he did show up sunday and we're coming big tree of fiber so we'll see what happens this weekend as far as getting that taken care of i don't see that i seen one i seen the one you first went but i haven't seen that one You've seen this one, Steve. The one he has, the one he's not. Um, I haven't seen the second one. That one yeah. he saw. This one he's yeah. seen. Okay. We do have some issues with some drainage before we fix our asphalt out here. We're going to get that done because if the asphalt repair guys can come tomorrow, we want to be ready for them. Then we get this concrete work out here done, then we move into the sidewalks. But I thought well, that the sidewalk was going to be done here. by uh, uh, factory. Where's the other one? Where's the other one? It, it was so high. But I 
because if they were going to fix it as part of the thing, no. No. That was, it was because of the work we had them do with their equipment. It, he didn't cause it, it was basically the work we had to do. Oh, okay. And he was off until, but we didn't expect him to do it because that was, it that was, was beyond special. his scope of work. Okay. That's what the, I thought I'd ask. I'm yeah. not. Just no, yeah. Him. yeah, he wanted to, he was going to talk to help. He was like, no, that side walk it was our responsibility. We had that equipment in here to do all the work. Thank you. Yeah. Resolution. So. Good job. Where you go? Michael, should we uh, I didn't sort of have sort of an extra session discuss these two before we open the talk in open session? Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Okay. Uh, would it be acceptable for Steve to be here since he's kind of with that? Because I am still important. Okay. So. That'll be I I. Next motion go on to executive session number 164405 II. AII. Second. We have a motion proposed to suspend. Seconded to go suspend rules for executive session 16 4 405 AII. Is there any just three eyes? Two. Oh, two. two. Excuse me. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> make sure it's the yeah. right yeah. one. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Yep. Come on. Come on. I'm flexible. I'm, okay. I'm still going to do my thing here. What little I got to I'm do. thinking with spring here, that would be a really good time for you to get somebody in here, though, and go well, through the seasonal stuff right now. And I can honestly say that I had planned to do quite a bit of stuff, to, like furnace fills and stuff. That I have everything right now, but I held off and maybe we could get somebody hired so that I can go that way with them and they would be, you know, every single time. Mm -hmm. How about this? If we, yeah, we can vote. We vote every single time. work with Steve, figure out what in the two individuals would be the best time, schedule a special meeting. That way, we could offer one or the other employment that day. That would just speed the process up. Either satisfy the special meeting versus with the maintenance position on it. That's all we need to discuss, but that would give us the opportunity to offer employment that day to speed the process up. Well, I think to be fair to Steve, we should mm -hmm. do it as quickly as yep. possible. Yep. Okay. So, I'll work on it. Put them, the three of them, and then send us a notice when it needs to be. Mm -hmm. Because it's always been, it's always been, or you say you have these meetings during the meeting? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, after 
The last game is 300. We did it after the regular game. After regular game. Yeah. Yeah. It's better try to bring some of yeah. uh, with me at night. For what I got. You know, yeah. Everything was at 7 o'clock at night. And that's you know, if it works in the evening for these two. Whatever. These yeah. guys, it, it helps you guys. I'm excited. I'm, my schedule. Now. Okay. And we are. I know you expressed concerns in the past about being overloaded. You think we're putting, setting this guy up for failure again? No, not not if not if not if the communication is open. You know, a little better than you know. I think a new person needs to communicate with you guys. Like it was said, maybe once a month, even mm -hmm. if it's. 10 minutes that you 15 if you got a problem you know air it out and get it settled right then and discuss you no know, why we can't do fix this right now or, you know and we have them in for our head update every month yeah and just stuff like that so they it kind of sets where they can really go and how much time they need to worry about wow how come I can't get this done and I can't get this done? And have a little flexibility, which I had a lot of flexibility, but if you're overrun at the time or two, bring somebody in to you know, do this odd job or do this, something like that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Nice day. Goodbye. Goodbye. These elected officials. Aaron, you're in. You're okay. Up. I can go first. Yep. Perfect. Um, so the last time, the so last time, two times ago, Nathan and I have kind of talked about bringing the UWB specialist, yeah. Ju July 11th, she will be here. Okay. Do you want afternoon or evening? Doesn't matter, Friday. Well, what, we're, what do you think we will get the best turnout? Do I have I a little know. better? This is the, the discussion over beef. Be, so, uh, yeah, but she, um, and then Micah most, the, mm -hmm. um, nutrition. Yep, out of, he's for our, the Northeast area, but he's based in Buffalo. Um, they both have some stuff to present on, mm -hmm. and so they're happy to come. But she was three, no, July. Oh, July. Oh, yes. I think, what day again? July? July 11th. It's a Tuesday. So, that's our commission. Or evening. Yeah. Evening like five, six, is that what you? Yeah. Maybe something like that. Okay. Then we can advertise. The yeah. I figured I would ask. You guys were a little more tied into the ag community than I am at this point, so. Um, but yeah, Shelby would present, and then Micah has some um, of what his research was on, and um, she they're also going to do a presentation for the porch kids on something sometime that day. So perfect. I will get that finalized. Could you also potentially um, visit with somebody at extension down there about the training mm -hmm. coming up? And, yeah. Um, I think that uh, our, some of our board members would benefit if we could get them to come to it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, because um, Mary Martin did one, was that last? It was either August or September. That's mm -hmm. out. Um, but yeah, I'll see if Mary's in, available to come. Do you guys have a preference of like when <coughs> you want to do it? I think sooner and later. I think that that's what it, it appears to me there's a lack of training in a lot of different areas and more training we offer to these individuals if, if they fall apart somewhere in their role, the better covered we are as a county because we've offered them that. And, so. Is it possible to do the training at one of their meetings each time like one of the boards meets? Is there someone in town that can do this? So the crazy thing is, is um, the only one I, that I know of, and I will do some checking that does it, is Mary Martin and she's out of Teton County. Um, yeah. But that's not saying that she couldn't, she wouldn't be willing to do some Zoom. Um, 
and that they're in the process of hiring a new community vitality and health educator in Campbell County. So depending, the way they've created these new CDH positions is they can be like a community development, they can have more of a health, so it's a really wide variety. Um, so it'll be interesting to see like who applies and what their talents are for that position in Campbell County. Um, if we get somebody that's got some of that community development and some of that training. Um, but yeah, let me reach out and see what Mary has and what else they can offer us in that direction. So. That, that extension of training that I took online is real, real beneficial. If you would follow any of that kind of format, I think it'd be good for all the board, board members. Okay, yeah. Because um, I know in the past they used to offer them way more frequently than they have recently. But and it might go a long way. It's, it would probably cover some of the bases for the stuff that the state's not going to mandate for training. So, yeah. I will happily reach out and see who uh, who can offer what. And so I just have my fun little handout of mainly pictures of the kids to a that would be my if the training went along with the state mandate. Yeah, that makes, that otherwise we're kind of yeah. what the mandates are. Yeah, we're kind of spinning our wheels if it doesn't. Any training would be beneficial. <laughs> um. So not a whole lot has changed membership-wise. Um, May is kind of the, the pause before the absolute craziness of for each summer. We kind of wait for school absolute craziness to go for the next couple weeks. But we are 45 days away from camp at Mallow and 79 days until the first day of county fair. If anyone is oh, starting to panic just slightly, then <laughs> that would be where we're at. Yeah, we don't <laughs> um, so next Monday, Sunday and Monday will be the archery county shoots indoors um, here in Upton and Newcastle and then on the 13th in Upton they'll shoot the 3D archery of course as long as the weather is good they'll shoot it outside in Upton if the weather does not cooperate we'll move inside to the indoor arena but we're fingers crossed that we'll get a day like this and they'll get to shoot outside um, we'll do all the lamb, goat, hog, weigh-in, and tagging on the 28th um, to get ready. So they'll tag, and then ownership deadline is June 1st. And then it's 4-H camp and showcase showdown and absolute craziness of June and July. So anytime you guys feel like um, jumping in and coming to see any of the 4-H activities, we'd love to have you. Um, not last week, the week before was National Volunteer Week, so we did some fun stuff for all of the volunteers and just tried to shout out to them and then just some of the activities. Um, it was really fun. We did a club meeting in Upton the other night and they had done the same activity at the after school program, so one of the little boys got to stand up and teach and it was like, that's what we're doing this for is so that even at five or six, they can stand up and teach their peers how to do the activity. So it's a lot of fun. Um, newsletter should hopefully be in your inbox this afternoon. It's gonna go out yesterday, but I've had a sick kiddo, so a little behind. So any questions? Vicki's like teaching classes are just kind of status quo over there, I think. Okay, Thank you. we'll look into Thank board you. training yeah. and We'll shoot for the 11th at like five, six, and go from there. Which makes up the ring is back in my mind, but something's happening that day that I can't remember what it is. It's the day before your birthday. Oh, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> it's day before your birthday, too. I know. <laughs> um, so, yeah, if you think of, like, if, and then once Micah sends me advertisement, I'll get it out, and hopefully we'll. Get some people yeah, uh, it should be fun. I'm excited to have them in our neck of the woods to hopefully get the 4-H fields and come along too. So, yeah. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to sneak out. So right. have a great Thank afternoon, you. guys. So you're up next, Mike. All right. Thank you, uh, Mike Stalkin, County Attorney, and Sandy Miss Stevens from whatever they're going to be called. 
um, was in here talking about um, they don't, it sounds like they don't want the victim witness funding and we're going to try to get that for the county attorney's office. <coughs> Um, we've submitted our budget request and we have a new line on there just so you know what that means is that that, that would be money we were trying to get from that entity the state the division the grant yeah so my thought on that is we have well we have a full time and a 40 percent time kind of person now um, I would like to transition the 40% person to be the victim witness person. She basically does it already. And then get a third person to do mo mostly the, um, since we have that extra money to hopefully, I guess, <laughs> to uh, um, do more of the, uh, of the, administra you know, the administrative stuff instead of the legal work. So we have the legal assistant, which I'll get into more here in a minute, the victim witness, and then like a part-time, maybe 16 hours a week, just doing emails, copies, stuff like that. And I think it'll make it run much more smoothly. So that's what that means when you guys look at the budget request coming up. Um, and um, we did go to our, Jeannie and I did go to our uh, training in Atlanta. Uh, I can tell you I'm not a big city person, <laughs> but the training was very productive. Um, I think we learned a lot of stuff that's going to help us be better able to prosecute um, some of these sexual crimes. And we have really learned some pretty cool tools. It was amazing to meet um, attorneys from all over the country, top notch, um, just top notch counsel that, you know, you just need to be around that every once in a while. Another thing we have is. It's good to get these every once in a while. Um, let me just get you guys into copy. The, this is, these are one of the first cases that I was involved in when I was a deputy when I first came to Weston County. So these guys were, these guys were doing illegal hunting stuff all over the state. And the Weston County Attorney's Office, uh, you can see in here that they, you know, they were involved in illegally killing two big horn sheep rams, the bull elk, uh, and 20 and various things. In 2020, they were all um, convicted, including in, in Weston County. And as you can see, the Game and Fish Department um, gave us some kudos that, uh, that this was successfully prosecuted down here. Those, the, I think these were some of the first sentencings that I was involved in when I first got here. But um, it's kind of nice to get uh, some kudos from the Game and Fish Department. Um, but these guys, I just, yeah, the fines on these are kind of incredible. But, um, but yeah, so just for your guys' knowledge. Um, the other thing I have is I am going to be asking you guys for uh, some funding to get Miss De La Rosa a paralegal certificate. Um, so she does an amazing job for our office. And uh, I think that uh, paralegal certificate will even allow her to um, do a better job. <laughs> and with that paralegal certificate, um, I'm going to be also, uh, I mean, the budget time's coming up asking for probably a bump up in her compensation. So, not probably, but I will be, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> so, um, those are the four big things right now. Does anybody have any questions? Um, I know we had Jim had a new employee this week at um, Road Bridge. How did it get it? How'd you guys do getting them together to do the new, new hire stuff? So Amber, um, he came up here today. So I don't know if anybody came up here when he was here. Oh, I didn't know he was coming up here today. I have an appointment with him tomorrow. I don't know. 
So you'll do over handbook and all that stuff with them? Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay, so I don't have anything. I'm busy working on the budget. Um, everybody, all departments had to have their budgets to me yesterday. I had to have a proposed budget to you guys by the 15th. And then um, once I get the special district, and we will start with on the budgets. Um, really, we can't start anything until I have this stuff from Susie because we don't know um, whether we're going to have to cut budgets. Um, dispatch is going to be a major one that's going to put us kind of we have what we gave them last year. That's going to have to be bumped for sure. We have to know for sure if we're going to bump it even more. So we're kind of at a standstill with that one. But. Does she know what you need? Uh, to, I mean, she knows what she won't for. know until we get paid for Right, I'm saying, but she knows mm -hmm. what you're waiting yeah. for. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, Susan's is waiting on the, the track run. Yeah, she has to wait until she gets stuck in from the state. Right. Um, we've seen a, a preliminary on the credit report. We just have got finalized yet. That'll, that'll give us a good indication of where we're at. Anything else? Ryan, you're the next part of Yeah, so um, I don't know if all of you know that Denise retired effective Friday. Um, we had several applications. To replace that position, so we're just going to be interviewing um, this afternoon. Actually, um, our youth services officer next week will be retiring at the end of this month. So I've already got a few applications and some interest in there. That one's going to be a, a little tougher one to, to probably fill. That's one to set of issues to fill, but uh, uh, we got some good applicants, so uh, I feel pretty happy with that. Are those um, on your website? Are there jobs yeah. on your website? Yeah. Did they go on the paper too or anything? Um, I didn't that one. I did uh, just my social media and, and uh, the website to start with. And then I thought about doing the paper, but it flooded with applications. So. That's where that's at. <laughs> Anything new on dispatch or discussions coming up with them? Friday. Okay. So we will tear back into that Friday. Hopefully we can get something finished up or at least real close. Are you feeling optimistic? Uh, no. <laughs> no. That's fair. It's a good word. I like that one. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, outlines for contracts even being looked at. Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. So we are getting moving forward with that. Yeah. Else, Brian. You're off the hook already, Brian. Brian. <laughs> 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 Looks like that is running to the end of our agenda then. I'll get that to you today. Yeah, I'll get that to you today.